Hello guys, Thomas Henley here from Asperger's Growth and today we're talking about how to calm someone down with Asperger's. We have training for first aid, what to do if someone's drowning, but there's not a lot of help on what to do when someone is having a panic attack or more specifically to this video when someone is having a meltdown. As you may or may not know, people with Asperger's and autism are a lot more likely to develop generalized anxiety disorder, uh, panic attacks and specific phobias. Uh, it just, it's just something that comes along with having autism uh, as well as different other factors um, such as you know being bullied and past experiences that may have caused us to get more anxious. Um, and the thing is, is that autistic people do deal with anxiety in a different way to normal people. A lot of the time during our teenage years, we learn how to cope with it, how to take it away out of public places and make sure that we're not viewed in, viewed in a negative light. Things like uh, sensory triggers, autistics usually have um, hypersensitivities in certain uh, parts of our body such as touch and smell and um, sight, bright lights. I know personally for me um, my eyes are very sensitive and they can cause like migraines and it can cause you know over stimulation. Stuff like that, background noise, that can be a big factor that even after 20 years I don't really uh, notice when it's driving my anxiety up. Um, so that's another good one. Miscommunications with people like social anxiety uh, just because of how difficult it is in general to communicate with an anxiety disorder it's a lot more difficult because of the communication issues that come along with having autism but don't you worry I'm here to tell you some ways that you can help someone that you care for or someone in public with Asperger's who may be experiencing a meltdown or may be on the brink of experiencing a meltdown and how you can you can know that they are doing it. sometimes it can be quite difficult to tell rule number one you have to remember the hypersensitivity each autistic person has a different sensory profile some places on our bodies can be very uncomfortable and even painful to touch whereas other places can be very relaxing to touch. So it's important that you ask them if you don't know them very well. So don't think that just because you are close friends and you've known this person for a long time that they are comfortable with you touching them in certain places. That sounds really wrong, but I mean stuff like shoulders and stuff. Um, particularly with myself, if someone touches my, my head, my ears, like it can, it, can, it can make stuff worse in a lot of cases. So it's important to know that before you move on to helping them. Number two, if they recoil from any attempts um, for you to help them in any of the ways that I've described, don't take it personally. Make sure you distance yourself from the person so that they feel less anxious. Certain people, um, certain personalities can make meltdowns worse. Maybe offer them something that might be able to calm them down, like sweets or fidget spinners or stuff like that, only if you, you know them, like, specifically. Number three, don't try to empathise or relate to the person too much if they're having a meltdown. If you're not autistic and you've experienced panic attacks before, you might be able to have a little bit of an experience of, of what it's like to have a meltdown, but it's, it's a little bit different and if you try to try too much to make them feel like you're, you've experienced it as well, it, you're more likely to kind of distance yourself from them, and they might they might take it as condescending or ignorant because in the future it can impact your ability to help them with the with the panic attacks. Uh, number four, don't 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 attach yourself emotionally or personally to what the person says or does during a meltdown. It can be a very traumatic thing to go through and if you're not familiar with the experience yourself um, 
and it, it inhibits a lot of your ability to function properly and logically. Number five, a general rule of thumb is that it's usually not I get a gear. I can't talk today. It's usually not a good idea to press for a response to a question. Um, same thing as I said before, the functionality is like reduced quite a lot. So um, I think there's something in the door then. <laughs> It reduces a lot of your ability to make clear thoughts, make clear decisions, it can make your emotions all up and down all, the, all over the place. So it's hard to answer questions and usually the, the added thought can be a lot of, can be an even bigger stressor and it can make, can make panic attacks worse. So generally it's, it's good to ask yes or no questions if you need to. And finally, number six, which I think is the most important thing for you in the long term uh, with your, with your uh, relationship with the person that you're trying to help. Make sure that you distance yourself from any judgment when the person is having the, the meltdown. A person can be really confident, uh, mature, you know, creative, intelligent, all that kind of stuff. They can have all those really good qualities that make up a very, very good solid person but when you have a meltdown it can it can it can change you quite a lot because all these senses are going all over the place your anxiety is going over the place it feels like emotional uh, torture it's like it's physical mentally draining and we stim quite a lot and stimming can be quite embarrassing tell them it's completely fine and that it will not affect how, how you view them and your relationship. So, once you understand all the rules that I put out, I know it's already quite a few things to remember, but bear with me, they are important things. I'm going to go through maybe three stages of panic attacks that you might want to, um, you know, kind of know about. And once you know about this stuff, you can implement it uh, long-term wise, short-term wise, so you can, you can do a lot of, if you know them very well and you, you go about with them doing your daily activities, there are a few things that you can do to help reduce the chances, so it's prevention, and then short-term solutions to reducing anxiety during, uh, during panic attacks or just before panic attacks. So let's start by talking about a scenario where the person is a little bit more stressed than normal. Obviously, people with autism and anxiety disorders do generally have a background amount of stress. Um, but I'm talking about more visual. Uh, you, you can tell you can tell more likely that they are they're anxious. They're getting distracted. They're getting a um, bit jittery. They're darting vision. The good things to look out for. So the first thing that you probably want to know is that busy places are one of the main causes of panic attacks. All the background noise, all the sensory information can, unknown to the person, create a lot of anxiety. So it's not something that we know and we can we can say, oh, there's a lot of background noise. I'm getting anxious. It's more of a a, a build up over the course of 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, it's not an instantaneous thing. It might seem like that, but if you if you have the eyes for it and you, you know what to look for, you can see it building up and you can you can get in at this point and make sure that they don't get upset. So the best thing to do in this scenario is to make sure you remove that background noise. I don't mean go and stop all the cars from running, go stop people from talking. That would be silly. What I mean is headphones. Headphones are the saviour of people with Asperger's. Firstly, it gives you something to concentrate on, removes your concentration, removes your concentration, removes your, your, your concentrating on... Anxiety is high because of the background noise. So if you give them something to listen to, take their attention away from outside worlds, reduce the background noise and replace it with one singular noise. It doesn't have to be any specific music, it doesn't have to be relaxing zen music. It can be heavy metal, 
I've got anxious and I've listened to heavy metal and it's helped a lot. Just make sure that you remove the background noise and the anxiety will usually go down quite quickly. If you feel comfortable enough with the person and they feel comfortable enough with you and you've exchanged physical contact um, in the past, one of the, the great things that you can do is applying pressure. Now, there is a known thing that applying pressure to body, our bodies um, during times of stress can relieve um, a lot of anxiety. Hence, all the, the weighted blankets that you can buy, um, like the, the strange t-shirts that you can buy that like squeeze and coats and stuff like that. Um, so one of the ways you can do that is through the shoulders. So the shoulders are a good way to apply, good thing to apply pressure to. You can get them to do it themselves if they want to, but they, they usually know, know about it. But what you can do is you can get one hand and you can just kind of push down quite a bit, you know, as, as you like make, making sure that they're all right. Just people in general, actually, if you, you know, making sure that they're all right, if you do that action, apply a bit more pressure than usual. It kind of relieve a lot of anxiety. Obviously, you can't really do that when you're walking and stuff. I mean, you can, I mean, probably like, Make sure they're right. Make sure that it's not patronising and they're not going, oh, it's all right, you're okay. <laughs> but that's one thing that you could try or you could ask them if, they, if they'd be happy with that. Another thing you can do is offer a really tight hug. Obviously, if you're not very close to the person or you haven't exchanged a lot of physical contacts, it's just probably a no-no. Um, but if you're in a relationship with them or you're very good friends, or you have a lot of physical contact, just regular physical contact. Um, tight hugs, you can get all the pressure from the shoulders, you can get it through the body, it helps a lot. Um, and that can be something that you could consider. Physical exercise, physical exercise is a good shout for reducing anxiety. Walking, um, biking, more intense physical activity like team sports, like football, badminton, just, going to, just even going to the gym, maybe not the gym because of the, the people and the background noise, but you, you understand what I mean. Uh, exercise is shown to re uh, uh, release endorphins um, and these kind of opo opioids that you release when your muscles become inflamed from, from exercise and that's shown to cause a relaxing effect both on the muscle and on your mental state. So next time you go out, you wanted to do something, um, if you incorporate a little bit of physical exercise into it, um, it's likely to reduce the anxiety and reduce the chances of panic attacks. Next thing, stick to quiet places like parks, uh, quiet restaurants, stick to back streets and stuff like that rather than the main roads. By doing that, you're reducing the background noise just as you would if you were, had headphones on. Um, but you're also reducing the visual stimuli as well um, if you do this kind of thing and that'll just generally dampen down the anxiety quite a bit as well as dampening down the anxiety if there is less people about they'll feel more comfortable with generally doing like some quite um, mild stimming like a little bit of rocking a little bit of you know just stretching the neck stuff like that and um, it can reduce a lot of social stress so if you if you're in a quiet place and there's not many people to judge them they're more likely to do that stuff um, and reduce their anxiety themselves as i said before panic attacks can build up anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 minutes uh, just generally just building on the anxiety until it becomes too much and the body needs, you know, goes into shock and it's like, ah, oh. yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, if the person has generally high cortisol levels that day, um, it, can be, it can have a higher chance of causing panic attacks. But you need to know how to deal with someone who is on the verge of a panic attack. So I've already talked about the signs that you can look for, such as the, the um, darting movement of the eyes, the irritability, irritable body language, lack of uh, concentration on tasks 
or communication, um, generally heavy breathing, um, putting earphones on, that can be another good, good sign that someone's you know, having a bad time. So when it really does seem to be more apparent, there are some things that you can do in order to make sure that they don't progress into an actual panic attack. As I said, if you're in a busy place, even if you're in a quiet place, take them to a quieter place, uh, such as a bathroom, a park, anywhere that's available. Um, get the headphones out if they want, if they want to listen to music, obviously that's another good shout. It's still going to work because they're not having a panic attack. They'll be likely to want to stim a lot when they're, you know, reaching the panic attack levels. So if you're in a quiet place, uh, you just be able to let them steam away as much as they want and um, you can even leave them alone if, if you want to or if they want to and that'll let them feel more comfortable while they're stimming and doing their own thing trying to you know control the breathing and stuff like that so they'll, they'll know because they'll have they have enough functionality right now to deal with it deal with it themselves and um, so as long as they don't, they're not harming themselves with the stimming just keep away, keep a bit of distance, you know, let them do their own thing. Um, but there are some other things that you can you can suggest if that stuff's not helping. You can get them to put the head, bring the knees up to the chest, uh, right to the chest, uh, put the head and the knees. Um, it's scientifically been, been proven that, that body uh, positioning like this um, in a kind of curled position can reduce anxiety. And if they feel comfortable about, about it, uh, place both of your hands um, on their shoulders, for even from behind or in front, um, on the arms, squeezing, holding, if they want to, they can hold, you, hold your hands, squeezing your hands, um, that can be very helpful. Or even something as simple as, you know, just letting their head go on your shoulder and just like them just pushing against your shoulder, uh, that can put a lot of pressure on their body and make them a lot more relaxed. And then if you're a little bit more intimate and you both feel comfortable with it, I suppose you can, you know, just like stroke the hair. Obviously, if it's not something that they like, don't do it. Um, but if they do, some people find it quite soothing. If that stuff doesn't seem to be working, you can try um, things that simulate stimming, such as you can push against um, the ball of their feet. You can get them to straighten their legs out. Um, push against the ball of the feet, get them to push against your your hands. That can stimulate the, the sensation of rocking. Uh, it's usually when we rock, we make, we make sure that all the pressure goes on to our, to our ankles. And that can be quite relaxing. Um, you can also uh, do stuff like intermittent contractions. So you can get them to tense up all the muscles in the body for about 15 seconds as hard as they can and then untense. Um, and that can, has been shown to relax muscles a lot more. One of the most important things that I've, I've personally experienced that helps me with anxiety is not really that known, um, but facial expressions and body language, tone of voice can be very helpful in situations like this, especially when the person um, is very involved with you or gets very embarrassed about having anxiety attacks. And so one of the more beneficial things that you can do is making sure that you over-exaggerate your facial expressions. Uh, it's very hard for us to understand facial expressions in general and body language, stuff like that, um, and interpret it. Um, in our daily lives. So it can become quite a source of anxiety because we're not completely sure how the person is feeling. So we still have to put effort into, into understanding whether they are okay with this, whether they are getting annoyed at us, angry at us. Um, so one thing that you can do to remove all that am ambiguity and make, make sure that they know everything is fine and everything is calm is to firstly, facial expressions, nice, you know, happy facial expression, not just like that, but like really content, it's okay, no worries, like seriously, it's okay. That's really good. The the tone of voice, make sure that it's very light, make sure that it's, you're very slow, you're not getting anxious, 
you're not getting anxious, they're not going to get more anxious. And if you think it's all right, they're going to think it's okay. As long as you make sure that you over exaggerate the body language, facial expressions can be very helpful. And I think you'll find that once you've done that, if they get anxious, they're more likely to feel more comfortable around you and more likely to come to you and, you know, stop them from having panic attacks in the future. So finally, during the actual panic attacks, uh, this is when the person is experiencing a lot of intense stimming, um, such as twitches, like twitches, muscle, muscle twitches, uh, hyperventilating, breathing very fast, like... <laughs> um, those are signs that someone is experiencing a panic attack, such as really fast darting movement of the eyes, uh, not really much responsiveness to um, questions, stuff like that and a lot more kind of emotional rawness in what they do so they can get very angry very easily very scared very easily um, and just generally lose a lot of functionality and brain function that they usually have the best thing to do if you're not very close to them and you see someone having a panic attack is to take them away to somewhere quiet try and control the breathing by telling them try and follow my breathing breathe very slowly in out and make sure that they copy you. Uh, give them some space, don't ask too many questions, let them stim on their own time and get it out of the system, making sure that they, you have some sort of visual to make sure that they're not, they're not hurting themselves in, uh, while they're stimming. And once the stimming becomes less intense, you can apply some of the things that I've talked about in the, in the previous stages where they're just about to have panic attacks. Um, you can give them about 20 to 30 minutes, that's a good, a good estimate of how long it takes to kind of come down. Um, give them something to do, give them something that they like, something to concentrate on, um, because they can get relapses if their anxiety and their cortisol is quite high um, after as well. Once they've achieved resting state again, um, they're usually a lot light, more likely to go below that so they're likely to feel a lot a lot of fatigue a lot of tiredness a lot of lack of concentration and um, generally because all their energy is being used all the mental physical emotional energy is just being depleted fully so don't, don't take them out and do anything stressful um, because they're probably quite set, probably quite sensitive to it after as i said you don't want them to have a relapse just make sure that you do something very calm in quiet places um, after after the experience. They're probably going to be quite uncoordinated, tired, sleepy, all of that kind of stuff. And just try and go go through the, the rest of the day and wait until they've got their energy back and then you can start to do more stuff. So congratulations, you made it through the video. You've been fully taken into you know my few step programs of how to deal with someone who is having a meltdown and um, or a panic attack there are obviously other stuff that you can you can do um, such as sensory items that I'm not going to go into in this video but might go into in a previous video previous video in a future video make sure you don't treat them badly for what they do and don't get annoyed at them it's not something that can be helped but it is something that you can help, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so if you like the video, make sure to drop a like below on the video. Make sure to subscribe, click in the little bell icon in the corner to make sure that you get notifications when my next videos come out. I love you guys and I hope that the sun shines brightly for you today and always. Peace, peace.